Recall in an earlier lesson, we learned that one of the limitations of the NPV or IRR method is the assumption that the project under consideration has the same level of risk as the firm's existing project. This is because when we calculate the WACC of the firm, all the component costs are due to the firm's existing project. So, if we use this WACC to evaluate a new project, the implicit assumption is that this new project has the same level of risk as the existing project. However, this may not be a reasonable assumption as most of the times the project under consideration is of a different risk level. This implies that the firm's WACC is not suitable for evaluation of the project. One way to factor in the difference in risk level is to estimate the project's beta. A project's beta is a measure of the project's systematic risk on its own. We've learned in the last lesson that under CAP M, we can use a firm's beta to estimate its required return on equity, which is the firm's cost of equity. Likewise, we can use a project's beta to estimate the cost of equity for a specific project. So how do we estimate the beta of a project under consideration? Obviously, there's no stock price to analyse as the project has not even started. One way is to make inferences from other publicly traded companies which are engaged in the business similar to the project under consideration. For example, if Walmart is looking to set up a fast food chain, using the beta of its own stock to estimate the cost of equity for the new project may not be suitable, as it's based on the risk level of its current hypermarket business. Rather, McDonald's stock trade beta or the fast food industry average beta may be more appropriate. In order for the estimation to be meaningful, the comparable business must be purely engaged in the same business as the project under consideration. Thus, using the beta of a conglomerate that is engaged in the same business as the project would be inappropriate because its beta depends on its many different lines of business. This is why this method is called the pure play method. Another important consideration is that the degree of financial leverage can differ significantly between firms and the beta of a firm is a function of it. In general, the higher a firm's debt-to-equity ratio, the greater is its beta. So if McDonald's debt-to-equity ratio is 4.0, while Walmart's is 0.8, we cannot just use McDonald's beta on Walmart's capital structure. We need to find what McDonald's beta would be if it had the same degree of leverage as Walmart. To do that, we first need to unlever the beta of the equity of the public listed company using this formula. What we get here is the beta of the asset without any borrowing. Once we have this, the next step is to relever based on the capital structure of the company evaluating the project using this formula. For easier reference, let's call this the subject company and this the reference company from this point on. At first glance, this may look complicated. However, once you see the pattern here, it's actually quite simple. The first thing you should remember is this term. When you unlever the beta of an equity, T is the marginal tax rate and D over E is the debt to equity ratio of the reference company and you divide the beta of the stock with this term. When you relever the beta of an asset, T is the marginal tax rate and D over E is the debt to equity ratio of the subject company and you multiply the beta of the asset with this term. For example, if the beta of the publicly traded company's stock is 1.8, its debt to equity ratio is 4.0, and its marginal tax rate is 35%, the beta of the asset without leverage will be 0.5. If the subject company has a debt to equity ratio of 0.8 and its marginal tax rate is 40%, the beta of the project will be 0.74. Once we get the beta of the project, we can use this beta to estimate the cost of equity of the project and plug this in to find the WACC applicable to the project. Let's work on an example. 
Trinity Incorporated is a US listed company that's considering building a power generation facility in India. Tadar Incorporated is an India listed company whose only business is power generation in India. Based on the given information, estimate the project beta for the power generation project that Trinity is evaluating. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. The main challenge for the pure play method is to determine which figures to use at which stage. The first stage is to unlever Tadar's stock beta. This has all to do with Tadar, so all the figures we use are from Tadar. Plug Tadar's stock beta, marginal tax rate, and debt to equity ratio to the formula, and we get a deleverage beta of 0 0.6. Take note that at this stage, we divide by the leverage factor. The next stage is to relever the beta to Trinity's capital structure. So at this stage, we use Trinity's figures. Plug Trinity's marginal tax rate and debt to equity ratio into the formula, and we get the project beta of 0 0.83. Take note that at this stage, we multiply the leverage factor. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.